Greetings, dear friends. I'm Warren Litzman, ready to talk to you about Jesus Christ. That's my whole life. That's my entire life is Christ. Christ lives in me. I'm not very perfect at this new kind of living, but He lives in me, and I'm picking up every day more of His life through me. It's just becoming automatic. It's becoming a wonderful thing that Christ can so live in human beings as to become their only life. This is what I'm talking to you about in Romans 6. Let's go back to Romans 6. We're in verse 19. And the first half of that verse says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. He must he could have been talking about preachers there and prophets or whatever. Because Paul knew that the greatest danger to the message of the Christ life would be for men to think they can do the same things within themselves and leave Christ out. He mentions men here. He says it's, it's an infirmity they have. It's like a disease they have. We're topsy-turvy. We're upside down. Our world's upside down now. It regretfully is at the worst spot I've ever known. They're killing Christians on every hand. They're tearing up governments. They're tearing up ancient things all for the sake of somebody's ego. It's a sad day. But despite it all, I see this blessed gospel, this old-time religion, this final gospel given to us by the Apostle Paul, I see these things being the hope of people getting out of this world. I see it as a hope. He blames it on men here. He says, the infirmity, uh, after a manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. A sickness. It's like a sickness and a disease where people say, I can do it. I can do it without God. I don't need God's help. I don't need to preach the scriptures just like they are. I, I, I buy about books and I've got all kinds of things I can say about Jesus Christ. You better watch it, dear friend. Christ is all. He's not a part of anything. He's all and all to God. And you're going to get to the Father's house by believing that. And by not believing that, you'll never make it. You'll never make it to the Father's house. Blunt words, you, you say you surely don't believe that. And we got preachers everywhere preaching we're going to all be saved at the end. These are fools. Those are fools. They're people who got their little feelings hurt somewhere. They can't take the Bible like it's written. So they have to twist and turn and dance on top of scriptures and make people believe they know something about them. <laughs> Dear friend, don't work. There will be men who have this infirmity of the flesh who will be changing God's plan, God's way, God's word. Today, if you want to reach a crowd, you have to tickle them with your words. Today, when I reach people, and it doesn't matter what part of this earth I'm on, I get this word before them. I get the scriptures before them. I want them to know what God is doing. What he says about what he's doing. And so he says, As you have yielded your members' servants to uncleanliness. He's talking about men who don't trust God. That's probably the most glaring error I see in religion today. 
preachers, radio and television, begging for money, even teaching that you're going to go to hell if you don't get that money. One preacher said, I'm going to die. I'm going to die if I don't get this money. What's happened to us? Lack of faith? Yeah. There's no faith. These people who are always after money, dear friends, are the ones who claim to be the faithful. They need to start with the simplest part of faith, trust in God. Trust in God. It pays off. It pays off. The line says, because of the sickness, the, 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 the disease of your flesh, you have yielded your members that Christ came to live in you, in your body to use. You yielded your members, servants, to uncleanliness and to iniquity, unto iniquity. Even so now yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. Talk about that later. You know what happens to people? Let's talk about preachers. I know a lot of preachers. I've been preaching 62 years or more. You know what preachers do? When they get a little bit of success, instead of the Holy Spirit guiding them, they got a thing called ego that guides them. That guides them. And you know, we have become so knocked around and knocked down as human beings here in America that we just take anything that comes along. Take anything that comes along. But sooner or later, every man's disease is going to be made known. Every man's iniquity, every man's uncleanness is going to be made evident. Listen to me, please. Don't play with your soul. If you accept that Christ as your Savior, he has become your spirit. You've been joined to the Lord. You're one with Him. But don't play with your soul. Don't say, well, you know, I just like to go down there to that building. It's so pretty and I have such reverence for it. I just like to hear that preacher preaching. He just says a lot of good things and I take them right into my heart. You know, when I hear somebody preach, I listen how long they can talk without using the word Jesus. Would you be surprised at some of the very best talk an hour, pronounce a benediction, and never mention Jesus Christ. He's all we got to preach. You can't preach to people to be good. You got to preach to people to understand Jesus, to know Jesus, to live Christ's life. That's what the gospel is all about. That's what we have to handle. And so our scripture says, you've yielded your members, servants, to uncleanness and from one disease to another. How sad. You don't know when it's going to happen, but it'll happen here in America. It'll happen in a lot of other big good countries because the scripture says it'll happen. That in the 
the latter days before Jesus comes. There'll be a great falling away. There'll be people turning away from Jesus. There'll be people who'll be coming up with a new program different from what the Bible teaches. Their sickness and disease will have a presentation in the form of another gospel. Paul was here. He'd say, let any man that preaches any other gospel other than that which I preach, let him be accursed. I love those words. Those are good straight words. No beating around the bush. No temp dancing on the scripture. Say it like it is. But whenever you withhold your members from the Christ that lives in you, you're going to have a disease that will punish not only you, but great numbers of people who listen to you. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Dear friend, the world is going to hell. You can talk about victories here and victories there, and I thank God for it. There are some places where, where people are really seeing marvelous works, God's grace. But we're not hardly touching the world. In fact, the simple tools that we would use as Christians to win this world for Christ are slowly being taken away from us. They take the Bible first. They take the Bible first. You can't have it in a university. You can't have it in a high school, and even a six-year-old child cannot bring his New Testament to the schoolhouse. Little by little, it's slipping away. God used to be glorified when students graduated and those who made speeches would speak of how God carried them through and how their future is planned by God. You can't mention God. You can't talk about God. But other religions have their religious acts set aside for them to exist. They got to have prayer three or four times a day, so they build a special room for it. They've got to kill out every person that believes in Jesus Christ. That's what they're doing today around the world. Big talk is that Christians are being killed, murdered. And I bring this up because it is a point with me of what you do with the Jesus that lives in you. I'm not so interested in you keeping doctrine, my doctrine, or anybody else's. I'm interested in you knowing Christ as your life. That's what it's all about. Christ is our life. There's no other kind of salvation. No other kind of people are going to get into the Father's house without Christ as their life. So we've got to make our mind up. What is important? What is it that needs to be said? What is it that don't make a difference? It'll be a miracle if anything we say in time to come will make a big difference. But you know what? We'll have to say it. Personally, I will have to say it regardless because it's the Word of God first. Second, it's the plan of God in operation. Third, it's Jesus Christ joined to the human being in one spirit. 
That's the way we're going to make it. That's the way we're going to make it. They're having a war now in Asia where the first thing they did in that war was to burn down every Christian church building. That's what the news said. Tear down their buildings. Well, that didn't stop them from praising God and loving God and serving God. So the next thing we'll do is kill them. And that's what they're doing. And a lot of our knotheads here in America, to pardon my language, but they got a knot in their head and can't think straight. Our knotheads here in America say, just give them time, they work it all out. It'll be a better world. Things are going to get all right. Christians can't swallow that. Christians won't swallow that. Because I've got too much in this word telling me what's going to happen. We need revival? No. We need the Christ that already lives in believers to take hold of the believer's members and let the world see and hear what a Christian is. I got to go. My time is up once again. Thank God you listened today, and I hope you'll be back with me for next time. Bless you.